cars are coming off the truck. It's happening at a lot of the dealerships around South Africa. These guys are just hijacking the car straight off the truck. And we approached them, you can see they were in a panic. The fire got out of uh, control and they needed some more uh, manpower to get this fire out. The homeless guys underneath the bridge, they said to us that the guys that are actually stealing the bikes, robbing the people, are also part of a drug trade. Today we went out to go see a client. And he told us to meet us out by his house in Hardy Piersport Dam. Hardy Piersport Dam is about 20 minutes from our office. So Zan and I left. And on the way to uh, Hardy's we saw a fault fire. So normally people do fire breaks uh, this time of the year because the grass is all uh, dry from the winter. So we just thought oh, it was just a normal fire break. So as we drove closer and closer to the fire, we could see that this fire was actually out of control. We decided let's just go onto the property to see if, uh, if they need our help or Doesn't look like it's too big, man. I think it's died down already. Go check it out. Dave, bring the fire extinguisher. Don't even get in there. What's, what's happening? Um, too big. And we approached them, you can see they were in a panic. The fire got out of uh, control and they needed some more uh, manpower to get this fire out. Hey, Zed, I trapped him, bro. Zane uh, just sprayed as much as he could and he ran across the fire to save the one guy who was trapped uh, in the middle of the fire. Fuck bro, you lucky. Okay, okay, lucky. Thank you very much. There was... Check, I mean, check, check you. Okay. You okay, Zane? Okay, bro. How did the fire start? No, well, we were just uh, had, <coughs> having a break, I mean, uh, lunch, and we didn't know where the car was coming from. So the first guy that I met, and he told us that there's people inside the fire and told us how the fire got out of hand. Uh, he went back inside uh, to try to put the fire out. So we just had to find him quickly. Good! Good! Zane's got a lot of experience in putting out fires and uh, doing fire breaks so the fires meet and everything. But I think this fire was also, it was a big for him as well. He was a bit scared. He didn't want me to get in, uh, in that situation because he, he knows what fires can do. Okay, so I think Trevor went on that, he went on that inside. The fire's burning in there. Trevor! Christopher, 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 Christopher,
the way this fire was going, it was completely out of control. There's no way that you could put it out of a fire extinguisher or uh, sticks with leaves on or anything like that or water. It was just had to, it had to burn itself out. So we got that guy, we got him out of there. We got everyone to a safe zone and at least we knew everyone was out of uh, harm's way. We're burning a fire break towards the fire now, just to make sure this thing burns out. It can get ugly. These fires can start running, running for Ks, and they just consume everything in its path. So it's so important that we get this thing out. Because when I got on the scene, these oaks were fighting the fire, and what they don't realize is once they're fire, fighting fire, the fire actually surrounds them. And they don't realize, but they just start fighting from every angle. And a lot of the time they, 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 they get out of breath and they collapse and they pass out and the fire burns them to death. Now all we gotta do is sit and wait. Let this thing burn itself out. <laughs> yeah, we've got a call from one of the garages there. So you are making a U-turn here? Yeah, we yeah, just go speak to them down the bottom there. As everyone knows, uh, Joburg Taxi is the uh, craziest drivers on the road. And for some reason these days, it's getting out of hand, you know. Because the way we're going right now, we expect uh, Sometimes these guys, they get aggressive. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then so we have to be on top of our game. Yeah, oh, hola, hola, man. Show. What race are you racing today, Rep? It's, uh, it's our baby cell race today, so I've got two baby cell birds in. Where are they, yeah. where are they coming from? They're coming from um, Smithfield. Yeah. And if, if I win, yeah. uh, I win 26 grand. So ah. it pays, pays for my pigeon racing. Hallelujah. Do you want some? Right, please. <laughs> you going fishing, I can go shopping. See, pigeons will pay for something, so start doing the pigeon dance to get them out. <laughs> How's the pigeon dance go? I don't know, just start dancing. <laughs> Yeah, me and Zayn are, we team, we together, the pigeons are at Zayn's house, I don't live there. So yeah, it's quite difficult for me to get there all the time and train the pigeons, but when I get involved with the pigeons and Zayn's away, I hit the winds. I'm Dom, I'm Zayn's cousin, I help out with the pigeons sometimes. We're sitting out waiting for the pigeons to come home, so hopefully we win. Let's get back to it. Check, that's a baby cell. We've got about 180 pigeons when we start off the season. We train them, I mean, it's intense training. It's a lot of hard work. I mean, you've got to give 24 hours, actually a full-time job trying to get involved in the pigeons. So do you only sit and support pigeons yeah. with me when, when you're going to get something yeah, out of it? Yeah. Is, that like, is that how we roll? That's how we roll. Is that how this family works? Yeah. <laughs> it is. I said she did last week. Yeah, she did. I was like... Yeah, that's That's my black one. My black pigeon. Look, pitch black. There's only two of them, eh? Three. We've only actually won one race this year, but we've won, we won a money race. The last two years, we've ended up fourth in the race, and the race pays up till third. I just played one of the other guys in the race. Um, his, babies, his babies were late on the, on the baby sale race, so uh, it's looking good for first and second. We're in the money. So let's phone and find out from the last guy. We're on our way to uh, my pigeon club. I've got to take my clock. Oh, we got the clock. We'll take the clock, and the clock gets uh, registered into the system. It downloads all, all the times that my pigeons came home. Then what they do is they, um, in, a, in my club, you can only score with the first 30 pigeons that come home out of all, all the guys that race. So they'll download all my times, and they'll see where we finished. But I know I won the baby, the baby cell race, so 120 grand, good day. I was bummed when Zane won the money, because I mean, we've been putting time and effort into it to get 
to get the win for this specific race. And I mean, I was there, I was overseas, and Zane, it's, it's a hell of a win. And he went and he celebrated without me. Uh, there's quite an awesome vibe there. We bring the age down by like about 50 years. So it's quite an old, it's quite an old club. The Robin by Acton Plunkett. As I awoke this morn, when all sweet things surround, a Robin perched upon my cell to hail the happy dawn. But there's new young blood coming up. It's always a, it's always a jaw. It's a terrible venue, but when I mean, we get in there, it's always brandies flying around. Guys are excited for the race to come. It's actually an awesome vibe. We won 21 grand, but I'm still salty. Is that it? What? Where's your money? Oh, that's pretty much. Oh, God. <laughs> you want Where's your money? money? No, you want your money now, hey? You want your, like, I want to go Where's shopping. Where's the money? Uh, we got a call from one of the garages there. They are our clients, and then so we go in there. There is some disorder there. The taxi drivers, uh, they are causing a uh, lot of traffic around, around the, uh, the garage. So, so we go in here, and then this is the place. Dave and Muni uh, went to go sort out the situation uh, when we got a call from the shopping centre that. Uh, the taxis were blocking the entrance uh, to the petrol station. I went through there, um, obviously, you know, Dave's one of the best guys to take with for that, you know, he speaks their language, and he's got a very calming demeanor about him. So you, you're making a U-turn here? Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna just go speak to them down the bottom there. All right. You can see the council man now, they've got nowhere to park. They put all these barriers here. Yeah, that is so why. The taxi's got no place to park, so let's go see, let's try and make a plan for them, see what we can do. All right. Because where we're going right now, we expect uh, sometimes these guys, they get aggressive. They do. Yeah, then so we have to be on top of our game. As everyone knows, uh, Joe Big Taxi is the uh, craziest drivers on the road. And um, for some reason these days, it's getting out of hand, you know. They've actually upped the level of uh, bad driving. Um, and unfortunately, it doesn't matter where you go in Joe Big, you have the same situation everywhere. Basically outside one of our shopping centers, there is a informal taxi rank um, and we deal with this situation basically on a weekly basis where the taxis are parking, they taking up the parking uh, space inside the, the shopping center, they're blocking the road, they're blocking the entrances, there's always, always something going on within there. Oh, hello, hello, man. Sure. When they got there, um, you know, there's always the worry that the guys are going to get aggressive, the taxi drivers, you know, a lot of them carry guns and that kind of a thing, so it's always kind of a dangerous situation to go into, um, but Luckily this time everything was pretty calm um, and they, you know, they spoke nicely to the taxi drivers. Hey, good job, boss. Hey, sharp, sharp man. I'm complaining about the garage because the clients are going to go to the garage. So I'm going to go to the garage. It's not true, but I'm going to go to the just to along. Yeah. yeah, because yeah, they are complaining about like, the clients are going to go to the garage. So I'm going to go to the garage. So I'm going to go to the garage. I'm going to go to the garage. You know, they managed to sort out uh, what was going on there. Like these two, they can stay here, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, but let's say the more, the more telling, I'm just saying, but this. Yeah, yeah, but this, this side fine. more. Just, just for the entrance. The entrance. Just, just the entrance. Yeah. yeah. They can stay there, they can stay here. Yeah. It's fine. Mm. Just the entrance, that looks clear. Yeah. Just the entrance. Yeah, just more, yeah. more, yeah. more this area. Okay. Luckily, this time, everything was pretty calm. Um, and they, you know, they spoke nicely to the taxi drivers and they were more than willing to sort the situation 
uh, art and uh, music taxis. <laughs> So what we're doing is we're just driving around doing some site inspections, just seeing our guards and making sure that everyone's doing uh, their proper job. I uh, went down to the bottom of the complex and a guard ran up to me. Remember? Yeah. Now there's a lady which is having a remote jam there, that side there, but KFC. There's a huge problem with guys using jamming devices and they use multiple ways of doing it. Just got a report uh, of a remote jamming that happened at uh, our shopping centre here. Yeah? I don't know how far you could have gotten. Man. I received a call from JP that uh, one of our dealerships has got a truck delivering vehicles. Um, crime has been rough in the area. Uh, we've had a dealership that's been hit already. Um, as they deliver the as they deliver the vehicles, the guys steal the vehicle straight off the truck. So what we're doing is we're setting up a little operation. We've got information that these guys are coming, um, and we've got a vehicle that normally follows the truck, meets the truck on the road, follows the truck to the dealership, and offloads the vehicles. Yeah, unfortunately, when a vehicle gets stolen and it's been booked into the, the dealership, it's uh, not yet insured and it's problematic because the dealer is liable for all that money. This is a dealership in question that we're protecting. Um, it's quite a big dealership. I'm making contact with Romeo One. In this particular instance, we're quite lucky that there's a high advantage point right at the entrance of the dealership. So effectively one of my response officers can stand there where he's at a height advantage and uh, any would-be hijacker would uh, be at a total disadvantage um, from a firepower point of view. Any suspicious behaviour here? Did you see anybody? Yeah, yeah but they left. It was just a car that we four car that drove off. Okay. Which direction did they go? They go that side, that side of the shopping centre. I took the high advantage point at the top of the centre where I could see what was happening from a bird's eye view and Zane followed in from the rear entrance. Mark, when they offload the cars we must make sure that we watch if there's no cars parked on top here, if there's no cars we must be. Cars are coming off the truck. Um, that's the manager of the dealership. Uh, he's just making sure the cars come off the truck. We're just backing him up so no one gets gun pointed and uh, the cars don't get hijacked. It's happening at a lot of the dealerships around South Africa. These guys are just hijacking the cars straight off the truck. Thankfully, it hasn't turned ugly at any of the scenes yet. They just get away with the vehicle. But uh, we, uh, we just don't want to lose any cars at this dealership. Uh, we haven't yet, but uh, sooner or later, the guys are going to start uh, using more firepower to get these vehicles. Yeah, I think, we, I think we're good here. So let's just let them finish the off-road, the stop section quickly, and we're going to hit a gym workout. Okay. Is it, um, they don't have cars coming off the top, do they? Are oh, they not offloading the top, the no. top rack? Oh no, that's, that's It's the wrong brand, bro. Should we go speak to our contact at the dealership? Just let them know the whole, they're offloaded, we're going to roll. Okay, let's All go. Right. Hey, Dave, what's happening, yeah, brother? Thanks. Bro. Welcome, man. Yeah, thank you, mate. They dropped the, sorted all the cars out. All of them are offloaded. All safe and uh, inside. So thank yeah, you very, very much, mate. All went down smoothly. Yeah. Now, now, see, Santa just signed them in. We're going to take them down to the basement now. Oh, sure. them cleaned up and all of that. And I've got another, I think there's another truck coming probably tomorrow. Okay. Um, but I'll let just you guys know. Just find us close to the time. We'll be on standby. We'll, yeah, we come, we're going to come as well. It's really hot at the moment. They've uh, they've taken a few cars, I, seen a few hijackings. I heard about that one up the road in Sandton. I think yeah. the other day. Yeah. No, so we not. I'm not just sending my response guys. I'm, the tactical team's going to come past as well. 
Africa, okay. just until it, just until they catch this gang. Yeah, as long as, as long as we can just keep, make sure our staff are safe, the guards are safe, and the cars get in here, that's all we, all we really uh, are concerned about. Thanks for doing a lack of job. Sure. We'll see you later, brother. 100%. Sure. Okay, I'll you tomorrow about that. All right, like it. Shot. We got, we got some gloves for the for the kids. Keep their hands warm. It's a try for the ladies. <laughs> we try to give to a, a number of uh, townships. So now these uh, we do actually do a lot of charity work. So these townships know that we we do a lot. So as soon as these guys they see, nowadays they see these night guard trucks, they already know that they're gonna get something. So they start running, they start lining up, they start pushing each other. So we had one of the informal townships. Uh, just give it back to the community for Nelson Mandela's birthday. It takes 60 minutes, so I'm just giving it back and helping out the community. What we do is we save up some cash. Uh, once we've got enough, I go to my suppliers. I try and needle them for price and uh, you know often they donate stuff as well. So once I've got a big collection of stuff we go out to the, to the various communities and we hand out like in winter we did a lot of drives we handed out a lot of beanies, um, neck warmers, gloves for the kids and that kind of stuff. Guys, 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 listen, if you go one line you go your way. So let's get one line. Okay. Back line. Guys, please make a line, it's enough for everyone. Yeah, so it gets pretty hectic at the, the, the back of the bucky where people are pushing and trying to get there first. And uh, So our method of crowd control is kicking a soccer ball. Everyone, all the people love a soccer ball. So once we kick the soccer ball, everyone runs to go try and get that soccer ball. So it, it creates a bit of a... A calm situation for us and then when, it, when everyone comes back they get into line again so it's a way of us controlling the, the situation. There's nothing better than going out on a Saturday and seeing the smiles on kids faces when you give them a little soccer ball or, or gloves or a beanie. You know something so small can make such a big difference. So what we're doing is we're just driving around doing some site inspections, just seeing our guards and making sure that everyone's doing the, their proper job. Yeah, we do these inspections quite often. It's just to uh, show the guards that we are in the area and then that they must always keep alert and everything like that. There's always different crimes happening, so we always go through and uh, tell our guards what's happening, the different crime methods and everything like that. The toilet? Yeah, I see people just take it in the grate, just put it in the Oh, uh, yeah, so shop, I'm taking it out. Take it back. Okay, shut up. I told uh, one of the guards that they were spread out, they were standing too close together, so we needed to cover a larger part of the complex. Uh, I went down to the bottom of the complex and a guard ran up to me. Trevor? Yeah. Uh, there's a lady which is having a remote jam there, that side there, back at KFC. Really? Yes. What did they take? Uh, the handbag and some other stuff. I don't know what the stuff is. Did you see anyone? Uh, no. We can go there and check. Okay, sweet. Okay. In the shopping centres at the moment, there's a huge problem with guys using jamming devices. Um, they use multiple ways of doing it. There's um, commercially available uh, jamming devices that are illegally imported into the country, uh, but you can buy them. Um, or they just use other remotes to block uh, the remote signal from your key to lock your car. And basically what they do is they push the button, it jams your remote, and when you walk away from the car and you lock the car, it doesn't actually lock. So uh, the guard at the top informed me that a lady got broken into down here. So I asked the guard, Jan, he pointed, he said the guy started running to Yorkskay. So we're gonna need to make our way there and see if we can see the guy on foot, because he's, he's obviously carrying obviously carrying a handbag. The traffic was pretty bad because it was about five uh, o'clock. I told Klaus to phone Romeo uh, three because he's normally in the area so uh, we could probably get him to get the suspect or uh, narrow down where the suspect is. I've just got a report uh, of a remote jamming that happened at uh
our shopping centre here. Um, please get a hold of the complexes down at uh, Yerkes Cape Park. We believe the suspect has ran down there. Um, please ask Romeo 3 to come through and come up uh, Yerkes Cape Park around the back. Tell them to the guy uh, carrying a handbag because uh, the guy told us that he stole a handbag. So the guy yeah, we don't have a description handbag. of the guy, but he's apparently carrying a handbag. How's my buddy? Yeah. You haven't seen anyone walking down here with a handbag? No, I haven't seen Nothing? No. Nah. Sweet, thanks so much. I don't know how far you could have got it. man. Someone must have picked him up. So we look here around, it doesn't, it doesn't look good for us. I think the guy's already gone or jumped into a taxi or something like that. Got the call. Um, that one of the Romeos had, uh, had caught him. Um, it, that was a real sense of relief. They managed to find to the lady's purse and all her belongings on him. He'd obviously ditched the handbag and we, we, we didn't manage to find that. So we're gonna go see if the lady's still waiting here or she's already got to the police station, but we're gonna tell the guard that we've caught him. So if the lady does come back to the center or comes uh, to ask any questions to see if we follow up or anything, he can tell her to go to the the police station to collect his uh, her stuff from the police. They are on the way to the police station with the suspect, so job well done, nice guys. Yeah, yeah. So if the lady comes back here, just tell us you can go to the police station. Okay, so it's okay. your stuff, yeah. yeah. The handbag is gone, but they've got, uh, they've got a purse and everything. Okay, so they didn't take some money there? No, they got they the money, the money and stuff, but we caught them with the stuff, so we've taken them to the police station. Okay, so thank if the, you. If the lady comes, uh, just tell her she can go to the police station to get no her stuff. No problem, we'll let you know. Shop. Nice, nice job, my man. Nice, 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 Keep us posted, eh? Ah, where, ah, where? Ah, where? Uh, there's a sprite that runs through Bryanston. A lot of people use it for recreational activities. There's a few criminals on the sprite with ulterior motives. So I've got four guys just sitting on the bridge waiting. I don't know what they're waiting for. They're waiting to single out people. They shouldn't come in from far. After we'd ridden a couple of k's, I decided that uh, this bike wasn't being my mate. So. We loaded him. He's a uh, He just realized he can run further than he can cycle. Zane's bike. Yeah. The tires are always flat. It's like trying to ride through thick sand all the time. Uh, there's a sprite that runs through Bryanston. A sprite is a river um, or a tributary to a river. A lot of people use it for recreational activities such as bike riding along the paths. People walk their dogs, other people go for jogs. And then there's a few criminals on the sprite with ulterior motives. They are dealing drugs, um, mugging people, hijacking bicycles. So it's quite a dangerous mix. We had a novel idea of patrolling on bicycles through the river. Um, we haven't seen it done before and uh, the amount of crime that happens on that river would justify a regular bicycle patrol. So we decided to put our gear on, strapped our guns on, and uh, off we went on the bicycles. We got information from under Balikir Bridge. That's where the guys have got the bikes. They're actually um, storing the bikes there and offering to sell them to the guys walking around. Um, I've also got information the guys armed. So what we're going to do is we're going to send the ground, we're going to send the vehicle units around, and we're going to come through the through the river and see if the guy tries to attack us or approach us or what the situation is. I hope we make a arrest today. So we have great success for the residents of Bryanston. Well, I couldn't cycle because I'd torn my hamstrings chasing that suspect. So I was, I was the backup from the car. We were patrolling and meeting Zane and JP and Klaus at Pacific Points. So they'd go through places that a car couldn't go through and I'd give backup from, from a different angle. We've had a few reports coming from this area where people are cycling down the sprites and they're getting hijacked, jacked from the guns. The guys are waiting, pointing guns at them. So we've got four guys just sitting on the bridge waiting. I don't know what they're waiting for. They're waiting to single out people if they see them coming from far. We're stopping, we're chatting. We're not arresting the guys. We're just chatting to the guys, chatting to them. We've got quite a bit of information from where the crime is coming from. Those four guys that were on the bridge there, there was two, two guys came across and joined them. 
When they saw us here, they were talking there. They were talking, they were specifically looking they at what kind of there. bikes we got. Because my side window's there, yeah, of course we slide in there. I think, it were, I, think, I think if we had to set them up, it's just one guy come alone, we'll get someone. The can put a side window there. Let's go check saw... further down, there's more no, guys no, 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 that, that, that are down there. Okay, let's move. I don't mind riding bikes and stuff like that, but I haven't ridden for a very, very long time. Uh, I think the last time I rode, I was uh, probably in high school at some point. <laughs> After we had driven a couple of k's, I decided that uh, this bike wasn't being my mate. So the one back tire just every time we inflated, it kept uh, going flat again. So it's it's an extreme like mission to like pedal on the bike when your when your tire keeps going flat. No fucking Zane's bike. Yeah, the tires are always flat. It's, it's like trying to ride through thick sand all the time. It's tiring, and I think I've realised that I can run further than I can cycle, which is quite sad. <laughs> We're patrolling down the river, we came across a number of uh, guys standing around doing nothing so we, we asked a lot of questions and searched a few guys. But they, yeah, we know, we know they, yeah. Uh... But they don't stay here. From Dipsloot. And they've got guns. So if I give you my phone number, you can phone me when they're here. And, and we catch them, we'll give you 500 bucks. Okay. The homeless guys underneath the bridge, they said to us that the guys that are actually stealing the bikes, robbing the people, are also part of a drug trade. They're selling marijuana to the kids, the kids are coming into the sprite, stopping and buying marijuana from them. We're just about to pack it up and then Zane gets a bee under his bonnet and says, let's go have a look at those two guys down there. <laughs> Suddenly Zane sees that uh, one of the guys is trying to hide something. So he asks him, why are you grabbing that packet so tight? Zane grabs the guy and uh, starts to search him, uh, looks inside uh, the packet and strews nuts, There's, uh, it's a giant packet full of marijuana. I just received a call from JP, Zane and him were along the river, along the sprites, checking for suspects and they caught a guy with a whole big bag of dacha and he knows something about the robberies happening with the bicycles. So we just headed there now. Enough dacha for you. That's mm -hmm. a lot, sir. What are you guys doing selling dacha here? Yeah, well, it was basically a guy that had himself a big packet of weed and he said he found it for the first time, which is probably the story that they all tell. And uh, he was trying to sell it so he could make himself some extra cash. I'm, I'm not a criminal, so I was sleeping there down the bridge before. So the, the people from this side, and then when we sleep there, they eat at the criminal, they come there. So when they are one to this side, so that's why I, I moved this side and now I'm sitting here. We could have got an informant out of this guy, we could have let him feed us information because you started to feed us information, but you never know if these guys, if they're talking nonsense, just to try to get out of it. But I mean, the amount of marijuana that he had on him was, it showed us that he was a distributor of it. And I mean, we just wanted him off the street because we don't know what's going to happen with the next kid coming there to buy marijuana from him. If just another kid gets murdered for money, they take his car or something. So we just wanted to get this villain off the streets. At the police station, obviously, they weighed it all, and we had about three hundred. It was about three hundred sixty grams of of weed in the bag, and uh, yeah, the, the guys obviously now behind bars as well as his co-conspirator. We had a family bra 
and we decided to invite the team uh, as well because they have become a part of the family. When the boys come over, they fit right in, uh, they play with the kids and uh, they just, it's just one big happy family. As I was walking out, Sarah asked me what's wrong with my legs. Welcome to Miami! <laughs> We've got a hell of a great family, we've got a tight-knitted family, my dad brought us up all together, I mean, we were only allowed to move out home when we got married, so we weren't allowed out on the street causing trouble, and my dad's kept us in a nice, nice tight bond, I mean, we all work together, we live close and around each other, we're always having family dinners at least twice a week, lunches on the weekends, I mean, I see my family 24-7. Guys, the steaks are ready, come and choose your steak. Can I, get, can I give you another one there for them? Yeah, yeah. Put on the other one. Give the piece of, uh, give the crispy fat to Gabriella. We had a family braai and we decided to invite the team uh, as well because they have become a part of the family. When the boys come over, they fit right in, uh, play with the kids and uh, they just, it's just one big happy family. I was walking out of the kitchen, I think I went to go pour myself something to drink, I don't know. As I was walking out, Sarah asked me what's wrong with my legs. Welcome to Miami! Nice. Good job. When you do something, you do it properly. At least I've got the guy. Is that the guy that out ran trip right there? Yeah. <laughs> Basically what we're doing is we did a raid at uh, grabbing all the illegal immigrants, the guys that are here, that don't have work permits, that, that don't even have their passports or anything. So what was happening? Some guy grabbed his bags and he hit the road. So Trevor gave chase, and I was watching it. I was watching Trevor, and he couldn't catch the guy. The guy actually outran him. So I decided to jump in my bucky. I jumped in my bucky. I waited at the robots even. I drove casually down. Then the guy saw me and he started running again. So I basically got in front of him. I blocked off all the traffic. I jumped out. He tried to sidestep me. He slipped, and I managed to tackle him and mount him into the ground. It's really hurt, Dave. Good job, the whole piece. While we've got the family underneath one roof, and uh, we're enjoying our lunch and having a few beers, uh, I look over them and I say, thank you, God, for such a wonderful family and such a great team. To my wonderful family and my fantastic Night God team, I love you guys. You're the best. I'm glad we could be around this table today together and I uh, well, hope to do this during the week a lot more often. <laughs> We're like a band of brothers and uh, we work hard and we play hard and I wouldn't have it any other way. This river is a hazard, um, people are trying to do their recreational activities, ride bikes and uh, they're getting hijacked and their bikes are getting stolen. So we're always going back there to dig for more information and to try to see um, if we can find out anything or, or just try to make a difference there. Hello. Last time we came here, we spoke to the guys here yeah. about the guys that are hijacking these people for the bicycles. They oh, said, no, they said no, no, when I came here to church last, they said uh, another guy was hijacking bicycles. One white man in the kitchen. One white man, he caught them? He caught, he caught him. He said he, he, he caught him up uh, somewhere there with a gun. The guy had a gun? No, the white man caught that guy. Uh, so white he, man and the guy. Yeah, so that, 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 that guy is the photo that side. So that white man, he catch him, he arrested there. He was arrested because there's no photo now. Okay. 
the guys under the bridge are pretty much the locals that uh, sleep under the bridge. Not so much hardened criminals, uh, just guys without a place to stay. Pretty sure they are involved in some sort of crime, uh, but they're the kind of guys we need to speak to if we're going to get any idea of uh, who the culprits are. That man had a photo that said, you see, we found him in the road. There was a photo between my city people. Yeah, I said, yeah, they catch you. The yeah. Good. So there was a white guy helping him? No. No, that white guy was going with the bicycle. Oh, the white guy was with the bicycle? Yeah. Yeah. So they, 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 they already had the photo. Yeah. The white guy had the photo. So he saw him. When they said they didn't know anything, I knew they were bullshitting because um, there's no way that you live under that bridge with a bird's eye view on either side and you don't know what kind of stuff's going down there. So these guys are definitely talking crap, so they were no good to us. All right. Thanks, James. All the, all the criminals must know on this river that we are coming for them. You understand? Yeah. They must all know we're coming for them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we gotta just be careful. I don't think that uh, maybe those guys are telling the whole truth. I think those guys are also involved in stuff because um, that story doesn't add up. And uh, the type of shoes he's wearing are the favorite kinds of kind of shoes that the guys use for house breakings because they're quite silent and they're stealthy. So um, we just gotta watch them because there's possible involvement there as well. There's no reason for them to be under the bridge there. So, we'll just keep tabs on those two guys as well. Guys that camp on the side of the river there, they're pretty harmless. Um, they're actually just construction workers and uh, workers from around the area and they've got nowhere else to sleep. So they come off to work, light a fire, cook some food and uh, just chill with their friends. No, these are actually legit. Last time I was there, that's my kitchen club, right? We were here on a Thursday. No, on a no, Thursday, Thursday like 12 o'clock. We had a little noise down here, we came running down there, there was a white guy, a gun pointed him, and then he started screaming for help. We ran down to help him, and these guys were in the river and they ran to help him. And they dropped the bicycle, they tried to ride the bicycle, and he fell in the river and left the bicycle in the river. So they helped the guy last time. Yeah. These specific guys that sit here. There's been a lot of crime there, but uh, tonight we didn't see anything, but we're definitely going to come back and uh, do an operation. Yeah.